The Microbit Educational Foundation created Microbit Classroom to make coding lessons easier to manage in school. But we think you could use it in conjunction with remote teaching tools. So if you're streaming a live lesson to a group of students who are at home, we think you can combine Microbit Classroom with your streaming tool to do a live coding lesson. I'm going to show you how that might work. First of all, you go to classroom.microbit.org and you set up your classroom session. You need to give it a name. I'm going to call it Name Badge. You can make your own project up here or you can pick one of the many projects on our website and you can launch them straight into Microbit Classroom. You can teach them in MakeCode or Python. I'm going to choose Microsoft MakeCode for this because the advantage of that is that your students don't need a physical Microbit at home with them. They can use the simulator in the MakeCode editor. So I've chosen my name. I've chosen my programming language. I'm now going to launch Classroom. It's very simple to set up. I'll just walk you through it very quickly. The first thing you do is go to the Editor tab. This is where you set up your starter code. You can use any code you like here. You can drag your own hex file in. You can write your own program or you can have no code at all. But for the name badge project, I'm going to give my students a couple of blocks that I'm not going to stick together. They're going to have to work out how to make their name badge using these two blocks. Next thing I do is I share code with students. So I'm going to click on that. Now, any student joining my lesson will get that starter code when they begin the session. The next thing you do as a teacher is you go into the dashboard. These are the joining instructions for your Microbit Classroom session. Normally you just put this up on the screen in the classroom so pupils could join along, but they could do this at home. So if you share this information using your online streaming tool uh, or chat or whatever, you could do a screenshot of it. As long as you get that information to your students, they can join your lesson. So we'll have a look at what it looks like from the pupils point of view. They're going to need the classroom name, which is Lime, Dog, Airplane, Guitar. In this case, it'll change for every lesson. We need all this information to make sure that people don't join your lesson by mistake. So Lime, Dog, Airplane, Guitar. Now, in this browser window here, this is what the pupil will see. They've gone to join the lesson. So Lime, animal is dog. I think it was airplane and the object was guitar. We're also going to need the pin, which is back on the teacher dashboard. 122529. So let's go to that, type that in. Back on the pupil screen, 122529. And they click on continue. And as long as the teacher is still logged in, so the teacher is still in Microbit Classroom here, the pupil should be able to join the lesson. I'm going to type my name in. I'm going to be Sam. So this is now Sam's computer we're looking at. And Sam should see the starter code is there. There we go. Sam's got the starter code ready to make the name badge. And we can slot those together. So I'm Sam. I'm going to fit those together. We can see over here on the teacher screen that Sam's joined the lesson and Sam's in progress. And Sam can see the program running on the simulator on the virtual micro bit. Back on the teacher dashboard, we can see that Sam's in progress. And if the teacher now clicks on the student code dashboard, not only can we see all the students who are in the lesson, we can see what they're doing. We can see their code in real time. So I'm going to say to Sam, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm going to download a report at this point so I can click on the download report button here that will download all the students code as a word document you can do that at any point in the lesson to get a record of where your students were and what they were doing so I'm going to ask Sam now I'm going to say do something different I want you to make your micro bit scroll your name on the display when you shake it so we're going to use different blocks for that. So we're going to pull those blocks apart. This is what the student's doing. Get rid of the on start block and we'll use a different input block. We'll use the on shake block. Here we can see that even though the pupil doesn't have a physical micro bit, they can still use some of the physical sensors and features of the micro bit in the simulator by clicking on the shake button. We'll click on shake and we get the same effect. So we can now see that when Sam shakes their micro bit, the name scrolls across the display. So back on the teacher dashboard, we can see that Sam has indeed done what they were asked. Now, you can change the activity at any point in the lesson. So if we want to share some new code with the students, we can go back to the editor. So we're going to do something completely different now. We're going to do something with music. So I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to go on start. I'm going to play a tune. Uh, we'll go to yeah, we'll go to a music block. I'm going to just going to play a middle note. A middle C for one beat uh, and I want you to make a simple tune with that so let's see what happens now Sam back on Sam's screen has still got their code there 
they can finish the lesson if they want. They can kind of put their hand up virtually and say, oh, I finished and I'm feeling really happy about that. Back on the teacher dashboard, we can see that Sam has finished. But Sam, we want you to carry on. We've got another task for you. So I'm going to drop Sam back into the lesson. So I'm going to say that they're in progress. Apply changes. And back on Sam's screen, we're now dropped back into the lesson. Now we've still got the same starter code we had at the beginning of the lesson. I, the teacher, am now going to share a new bit of code with everyone. So I've got my new activity here. I'm going to click on share code with students. I can choose at this point whether I send the code to all students or I can choose individual students. Maybe it's just Sam who needs to move on with the new activity. But I'm going to say it's all students and I'm going to send code. Now, bear in mind that because I selected all code, it's going to wipe over the code that they've got in their editor. So I go back to Sam's screen. I've got a message. Your teacher has sent you some code. I've got the option here to use code. I'm going to click on that and I've got the new starter code so I can get on with my new activity. Now, when you've wrapped up at the end of the lesson, you can ask your pupils again to say I finished and say how they feel. Maybe I'm a little bit less confident about that one. Back on the teacher's screen. Uh, we go to the dashboard and we can see where we are. We can see that Sam has finished. And then this is where I can now save the classroom. So if I'm confident everyone's finished, I can download the whole classroom session as a single HTML file. You can save that wherever you keep your documents normally, and you can use that to resume the lesson at another time. Double click on the HTML file. It'll load it up in Microbit Classroom. Yeah, your students use a new pin and they can join the session uh, afresh another time. You could do that anytime you want. So you can download the whole lesson that way as a single file. And then when you finish your session, click on end session and that will clear everything out of your browser. So everything is clean and ready for the next time. We hope you find Microbit Classroom useful for remote teaching. Bear in mind it is in beta, so there may be some glitches along the way, but we'd like to hear about that. We really want your feedback. So get in touch with us through our support channels. And if you want some ideas for activities to use in Microbit Classroom, there's a lot to choose from. Have a look on our remote teaching webpage. You'll find links there to lots of activities, resources, lessons that'll help you get going and should prove useful to you in setting up sessions for you and your pupils to use when you're teaching them remotely and they're learning at home. Oh, my God.